Hi, I'm George, and I'll be showing you how to use Photoshop Elements Effects to quickly and easily add a new look onto a photograph. Now, if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button, click on share and subscribe, hit that bell icon for notifications of my new videos. I'm doing new videos every single week. Take a look at my channel for hundreds more Photoshop Elements videos, and also take a look at my complete training course for Photoshop Elements. It's the best way to learn this program, and there's a link for that right down there in the description. Photoshop Elements has a whole bunch of pre-made effects that are simply one click to apply onto your picture. Super easy to use. And you'll find those in the Photoshop Elements Effects panel. And that's right down here. There's your Layers panel and there's the Effects panel. Bunch of categories in here. Now the top one where it says Elements Plus, this is a plugin that I've installed after the fact. So you probably won't have that unless you have Purchase Elements Plus plugin. But below that, all of these, Faded Photo, Glow, monotone color, painting, panels, seasons, textures, vintage, all this stuff comes pre-built inside of Photoshop Elements. Now the first thing you should do when working with the panel over here is go over here to this little icon right there upper right hand corner, click on that, and come down here where it says show names. That just gives you the names of the effect right down below. Makes it a little bit easier to see what it is without having to try it and see what happens. You can also hover for a second like this and you'll see what the name is right there just by hovering your mouse over the effect just for a moment and it's going to pop up that little dialog right there. Now to apply these, it's real easy. Just click on one and it applies the effect. It's that fast, that easy. Now it can get confusing if you try clicking on several of these things. You may get some strange stuff happening like that. So if you have an effect applied, the best way to undo that effect is to go up to Edit and come down and use revert right here which is also the shift control a keyboard shortcut and i'll be doing this throughout this training video here using that shift control a what that does is it reverts the image to the last saved version and in most cases when you've just opened up an image that's the image you opened up so it's the easy way to try these things out just like that and then get back to that initial setting that's control shift a there you go it just resets that okay so Take a look at some of these. This first section here, Faded Photo, this is different ways of fading out different parts of the photo for different effects. This one gives you a black and white center. The next one over here, Color Fade Horizontal, which is a left to right color fade. Next one here is a Color Fade Vertical, that's top to bottom color fade. Let's take a look at that one real fast. There it is. See how the top is faded out and the bottom is colored? It's a top to bottom fade. Let me just do that shortcut to reset that. Here's a colorful center and fade out towards the outside. This is often a very interesting look, especially if your subject is right in the middle. This one can work out very well. Now the one problem with these effects in here, these Photoshop Elements effects, is that you don't have any options with these. You apply the effect and it's done. That's all you can do. Now one thing you can do here to make these a little bit more useful, give you a bit more control, is to come down to your Layers panel right there and make a duplicate of your background layer. So I'll right click, Duplicate Layer, choose OK. There we go. We can now apply those effects onto this layer here. Once that's done, we can then blend that into this layer, kind of minimizing the effect. We can do our blend modes. Lots more options if you do it this way, applying your effect onto a new layer. Okay, back to our effects panel right here. Let's take a look at our next section, and that's glow. These really add in kind of an out-of-focus effect. Now the bloom effect, click on that, and it does this interesting look. Again, this is really nice sometimes, and in this case, this would work out very well for a greeting card, for instance. So some of these will work out very well. Some of these, depending upon your picture, may not look nice at all. We'll see a couple of those as we go through here. But oftentimes, you get some really interesting, and as you can see here, very fast effects. Let me show you what I meant by using the double layers down here. Notice that what this did is it made two layers there, and it kind of moved this one up, and this is clipped into those layers. So it's an interesting effect. So actually it's using a blend mode as part of that process. So if we change that blend mode, we'll get different effects. And that gives us, as you can see, even more control over the overall quality of this particular effect. So keep that in mind that if you do this on a separate layer, it's going to give you more options. Let's go to that Control shift a to revert to the original. There we are. Okay, back to our effects. So we have that. We have an oil pastel. 
which kind of looks interesting. It's, it's fairly subtle effect, as you can see there. Not too much on that one. Soft flat color, a soft focus effect. Again, this works out sometimes well, sometimes not. It doesn't even really show here very much on this particular picture. So as you can see, it's going to depend upon your image on how much this is going to affect the quality of your photograph. Okay, monotone color. Just simple, basic kind of duotone color effects in here. Tint black, tint blue, tint green, tint purple, red, or sepia. The sepia is a real fast way to give it that old-fashioned look. That's just probably the fastest way to give it an old-fashioned quality is using that tint sepia from the monotone colors. Okay, let's do our keyboard shortcut and get back to our normal setting. There we go. Now, paintings, these are a little bit odd. I have to admit, some of these are kind of strange. Here's the fluorescence. As you can see, it's a bit of a strange look. If it's just imagery, it does, I don't think it works out that well for things that are alive like this cat. It's kind of nice over here, though, as a graphic picture. So if you have just objects, this might be a nice one to use, again, as a basis for doing a card. Okay, let's just back up out of there. Oil painting, and some of these also may take, as you can see, they may take a moment or two to apply. I think oil painting is actually a complete failure. So that's one I never really use. I don't know what that texture is about all in there. Just back up on that one. And then the watercolor effect. Again, if it doesn't happen right away, just give it a moment. It's going to come in. And the watercolor, again, looks looks nice down here. Not so good on the cat. Maybe just too much white. If it was a different cat with more texture in there, it may work better. But there's that watercolor effect. Now, a lot of these effects you can also do if you went up here to the filter and filter gallery and doing a combination of things up here. You can get some of these effects that way. It's just a lot faster here with the Photoshop Elements Effects panel. Okay, back up to the effects here. There's a panels one. Now this is interesting. This actually divides your image up into these panels. And again, this works out well sometimes for some images, not so well on other ones. I found on this particular photograph, this last one here, this zigzag, is actually kind of interesting. For this to work out well, you need to be able to see and understand the whole picture. And if you have something like a cat, you need to have the cat's attention right in your main panel, which in this case would be this middle one right there. So this works out well for this particular zigzag option. But that's what all of these do. It just divides your image up into pieces, almost as if it's been printed onto these different surfaces, which have then been applied to a wall. Okay, let's just back out of that. Seasons just put some basic effects like rain or snow, summer and winters. Most of these I don't think work out that well. I'll show you the rain one here. Might work if, if the picture is correct, if it's a real rainy looking picture, this might give you the effect of it being rain. Again, this is where I would go back to the layers and then do some adjustment on that in the layers in here. So interesting effect really depends upon your picture. All of these really need an outdoor shot to work out well. Here's the snow effect. There you go. Personally, I would blur this out a little bit for the snow effect to make that work. And summer is kind of a hot coloration. And winter is more of a monochromatic look. It's a really subtle color look. Okay. So those are kind of hit and miss. Textures are just a little bit weird. First off, the lizard skin just applies a texture like that onto the page. Again, there's no control over size of the texture or anything like that, so it's a bit limited what you can do with that one. Let's just back out of that. And the rubber stamp could be an interesting technique. Again, it depends upon your picture on how this is going to work. You see that that took a moment or two to actually be applied as well. This works better for graphic objects or text, things like that. It may work out nicely for a regular photograph. It's just kind of a strange or odd effect. Okay, just back out of that one. And then finally, our last one down here, Vintage. A couple of these, I think, work out very well. Colored pencil, not so much. It's a little bit wishy-washy to my eye. I think the old paper is nice. It puts an actual paper texture on your image. And if you're doing an older fashion type effect, this works out really well. I think that's one of the better effects in this whole thing. It's almost like a parchment that's been wrinkled and then flattened out again. And then we have the old photo. Puts in this kind of a grid line. I don't think this one works out as well. The lines in here don't really look like an old photo to me. I'm not really sure what that looks like. Almost like it's been printed on some kind of a fabric, maybe. But again, I don't think that one is as effective. I think this one is nice, though. The 
old vignette. It's a bit higher contrast, has a nice vignette effect in there, and this can be a very good, very fast way for a dramatic look. Again, if it's being used, especially for a card, this is an easy way to give that nice effect in here, and then you put in your text, maybe right up here. Okay, let's back out of that one. And our last two here. This one's not so good. There are much better ways of doing a pencil sketch. This one's really not as effective. And I've done pencil sketch videos before, so I have several of those actually up on my channel. And finally, the tinted old effect. This is actually not too bad. It's maybe a bit too dark in the blacks. But aside from that, it's actually not too bad on the way some photos will fade out in the sun. Maybe a bit too much green in there. But it gives that, that correct kind of, kind of a look that you might want to have for a faded photo. And one little final note in here, I mentioned that it's best if you do these on a new layer, a copy of your background layer. That way it gives you more options, maybe more changes of your blend modes, things like that. It gives you more flexibility. Sometimes that won't work, and this is actually a good example of that, this old vignette. Let's go over here to our layers. Let's make sure we have that duplicate in here. There we go. Choose OK. Go back to our effects. I'll click on this old vignette. There's the effect. Looks real nice. We'll go back to our layers again and notice that we've lost that other layer in there. And that's because part of the process of getting this effect was to merge all layers down to the background layer. So that may be part of the effect. It depends upon the different effects. Sometimes they will merge down like that. Sometimes they don't. So just be aware that that might happen. Now if that does happen, you can always open up your original image. First save this image as a new file name. You can then open up your original image, bring that original image back in here as a new layer. Let me show you that. I'm just going to click on this. Let's make layer from background. That just converts it from a background to a layer zero. And then let's go over here and I'll open up that cat picture right there. There we go. I'll pull that in here. So we have both pictures are now back inside this one file. So I'll solve that one problem. I'll get that position exactly. I can take this one, pull it underneath. There it is. And now I can work with the blend modes between these two layers. So even if Photoshop Elements collapses the layers as part of the process for that particular effect, you can still get around that after it's been done by bringing back in your original image. And you can then do such things as you know go through your different blend modes in here and get, again, an even wider range of effects based upon that original effect. So there you go. That is what that effects panel is all about. And again, Lots of potential in here, lots of options. I'm sure you're going to find a few of these that you like and will use frequently. Okay, if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button. Click on share, click on subscribe, hit that bell icon. Check out my channel for hundreds more Photoshop Elements videos. And take a look at my complete training course for Photoshop Elements. Again, it's the best way to learn this program. And there's a link for that right down there in the description. All right, and I'll see you next time.